Where are you from? Uh, born in Newark, New Jersey. Moved down here. Um, and I've been in and out of Georgia since 96. 96? Mm -hmm. What was life like in Newark, New Jersey? It was rough, man. Um, moms worked three jobs, went to school. So we spent the majority of my time living with my grandma. Um, started hanging with the wrong crowd. Mm -hmm. And uh, once my mom peeped that, she had got a job uh, working for the 1996 Olympics and mm -hmm. ended up uh, moving down here once, uh, once that was done and been in and out of Georgia ever since. Mm -hmm. And were you a creative child? Oh uh, yeah, I started drawing at like four. Um, I started tracing <laughs> at four and then one day uh, something just told me to try drawing it without tracing it and mm -hmm. it just came natural and I've just been drawing ever since. Wow, okay, so you started off with drawing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and and was that when you were in elementary school? Yeah, um, yeah about four years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ever, ever since four years old. And I didn't start taking it serious till I got about middle school. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Do you come from a creative family? I don't think so, man. Um, it, they might, some, uh, it will be on my father's side because everybody on my mom's side of the family um, is more so culinary, but mm -hmm. as far as like artistic ability, um, I would have to say it comes from my father's side, but because I don't have a relationship with them, I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so why don't, why don't you have a relationship with your... Um, some people just can't shake an addiction. And that's, that's just how that goes. Um, it wasn't one of those situations to where I want to keep you from your father because I don't like him. It was just my mom was saving us from, you know, a heartbreak. Mm -hmm. Just seeing our parent, our, our father, um, not being able to shake an addiction as well as their family. So mm -hmm. and that was that. Mm -hmm. So growing up, you didn't have the relationship with your father? Oh, we tried. But okay. I mean, you know, you can't force somebody to do something that they don't want to do. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really start talking to my father until I was 23. I'm 37 now, so. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so do your, does your mother agree with your creative career now? Oh, she loves it. She, um, I actually kind of um, took a break from it when uh, my grandmother passed away. Cause to me, like when my mom and my grandmother were together, you know, they were like my biggest fans and that kind of just died off. So I didn't have the, uh, I called it like a block in a sense. So mm -hmm. and I just kind of put my artistic ability to the side and things went left after that point. Yeah. At, at what point did you actually go from drawing to photography? Actually photography started um, about two years ago. Yeah, about two years ago. And um, it started as a hobby because I needed to find something to do with uh, channeling my emotions and my anger because I had started going to therapy. Mm -hmm. And um, I needed to find something to do to, you know, a lot of people say the, the uh, uh, empty mind is a, the devil's playground. So instead of just letting things just be what it is, I had to find something to do to get my mind off of things and not get depressed. So I picked up photography. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose photography instead of painting, tattoos? Um, I, that's crazy, because I did want to do tattoos, but I don't do well with seeing other people's blood. And then, um, Facts. painting, I'll, I think I've only gotten good at painting when I go to sip and paint, or paint and sips, whatever they call it. Um, I could sit there and they'll tell me what to do, how to paint this, and it'll come out great, but for me to do it on my own, which is kind of crazy now, but um, to create something on my own, I, I couldn't, which is crazy because now I do spray paint art on canvases. Mm. So um, that's, that's in another hobby I picked up. But photography was, um, I took a lot of pictures on my cell phone, especially like when it came out with portrait mode. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it made my haircuts, because I also cut hair full time, so I feel like it made my haircut stand out more. And then, lo and behold, one day, this is the same original bag, but um, mm -hmm. this was like the week of Thanksgiving. This guy came and got his haircut. Um, he left. The bag was sitting in the same spot for like a week. Mm -hmm. And we ended up moving it to another part of the shop, and that bag stayed in the shop until the, the week of uh, Valentine's Day. And I found out there was a camera in there. 
and I felt like that was meant to happen. So once I found out how much it called, how much it was worth, and I, and I was tripped on because like nobody called to check on this camera because the camera was worth eleven $1 hundred dollars. So nobody called, nobody came back looking for it. So I took it. Um, it was just a hobby at first, and then I'm, I'm the type. Once I learn something. I, I and I love it. I become good at it. I may become great at it. So I just turn it into a business. Mm. Did you face any challenges um, when starting your photography career? Um, my main challenge. Um, I, I wouldn't say I, I had a bad habit of uh, putting myself on other people's progression and timeline, which threw me all the way off, which, and I, and I, like, I will tell anybody, just don't do that, because it can put you in a place you do not want to be, oh, my friend just got a car, I ain't got one. Uh, this picture, uh, uh, this person's pictures look like this, and I need mine to look like that, and it, it'll stress you out, and that was a problem that I was having. Mm -hmm. But um, there's this thing called YouTube University mm -hmm. uh, that I would go on, and whatever, the, what I was uh, focusing on, I looked that up, and that's how I learned to do what I do now. Hmm. Are there any photographers that you admire or that inspired you to start? Yes. Um, the main uh, there's one named Felix Hernandez, and then the other one, um, Felix Hernandez is cool. Um, I love his work. My thing, I'm more so like a straight to the point kind of guy, and he talks a lot. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with breaking down what you do step by step, but I'm just if you don't catch my attention. I'm out. Yeah. But uh, there's another. Um, photographer by the name of Manny Ortiz. Mm -hmm. He like gets straight to the point. This is what I do. And I just go from there. But those two, and then I have like a couple frat brothers who have been doing uh, photography longer than I have. So I follow and shadow them with events and then pretty much learn from them and create my own thing. What's your favorite type of photography to shoot? Off camera flash. Okay. Off camera flash. That's, um, um, we have the on camera flash. So. Cameras have the little metal thing on top of the uh, camera, which is called a hot shoe. You just put a flash on there, um, which is fine. I actually had to do that in your studio uh, mm -hmm. today because I had left my uh, soft box and mm -hmm. light or whatever. But um, off camera flashes, I can set a flash right here, um, aiming at me, and I can control how I want my background to look. It makes the, the subject stand out a lot more, it makes the subject sharp. I, mm -hmm. like, I love it. But that's really? my favorite type. And so is that how you kind of get that like high fashion look? Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's not so it's not the camera. It's the uh, actual. Flash. It's it's the light. It's the camera. I, I but I personally say you can have any type of camera. But I think it's the it's the uh, the person behind the camera. Mm. But a lot of people think it's a filter. It's not. It's it's literally a flash directly on that uh, subject. You control the ISO. You can control the lighting of your picture. You just put how dark you want the picture, how light you want it, but that's what I love about it, because you have full control over that. Mm. Why is photography important to the world? People love memories. I mean, we can sit here and tell a story all day. Like, if I tell a story on, oh, we was at a wedding and they smashed a cake and such and such face, and if I got a picture to match that, the story is already funny, but to have pictures to go with it, it makes the story funny. So people love memories. And um, I'm pretty sure there's going to be ways that photog they're going to try to find ways that photographers are not needed, but photography is always needed. <laughs> photographers are always needed. Uh, you can use phones, but a phone can only do so much. So I, I feel like it's important because people love creating memories. Mm -hmm. Do you have any like dream shoots in your mind of people that you want to take pictures of or events? Uh, do I have dream shoots? Nah, I'm. With me, I'm still learning. I, I I would love to sit here and say I would love to shoot at this concert or at this NFL game. But if I'm not ready, I'm not ready. I'd much rather work myself up till I'm comfortable up until that point. Because even with today, it's something new I learn about photography every time I do a photo shoot. So mm -hmm. as of right now, a dream, I, I wouldn't say I have a dream to do any type of photo shoot right now. Mm -hmm. When you started, uh, when you started out on your photography journey, did you did you feel like you would get to where you are now, like being able to make money from it, or was it you know one of those things was like not, not at all. Uh, um, when I started, like I said, it was just a hobby. I didn't think 
like people I know or people I don't know would be like, hey, let's do it. You got to. I want you to shoot my photo shoot. And now, when I started, I'm like, okay, I got a camera. Cool. <laughs> it's, it's not no disposable camera. It's it's a it's a legit camera. So I didn't think nothing of it. But once I saw what off camera flash was. I fell in love with that, and I'm the type I like even to this day. Like before I go to sleep, I will watch tutorials all night on mm -hmm. that specific photography or any type of photography. But I didn't think I would get to this point right now. No, not at all. Well, does your do your parents support your career? Does your mother? Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, my mom, she's a caterer. Uh, she's she's been a chef for like 22 years plus, and now she has her own catering company. So. Mm. Um, I, I'm like slowly stepping into videography, so I did her and my stepdad's uh, vow renewal. I did a video for that. Um, anytime something is happening down there in Florida, can you come shoot this? Can you come shoot that? Yep, I'm on my way. So they, they definitely support. I would say probably like my biggest supporters. Mm -hmm. If you had to choose between photography and videography, which would you choose? Hmm. I would say more so videography because um, Again, anybody can take pictures, um, but if you got a good videographer, I, I think that's more so accepted now. Because I mean, you got Instagram, you got camera on Instagram, excuse me. Um, you got cameras on your phone, and it's just anybody can snap a picture. But I think with video, you can hear words, you can see the moments. You can, you know, it's like when you're watching it, you can feel like you're there. So I, I would still, I love uh, photography, but I would say videography. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like videography can sort of like reach the viewer more? Yes, definitely. Because like I said, you can you can see the moment. Like I've had my frat brother um, who got married a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, he saw a video I did weeks prior to his wedding. And he was like, man, I felt like I was at the uh, at the event. And uh, he was like, you know, I know it's last minute. It's like Thursday. His wedding was Saturday. And he was like, can you do a little recap video for the wedding? I started off as a guest and I ended up being a guest and working, so definitely a uh, video. What's the most difficult thing about being a creative this day and age? Um, it, it, sometimes you just hit a block. Mm. Um, I could be sitting here like today, I was thinking about a, a Sweet 16 photo shoot that I'm gonna be shooting next week. Mm -hmm. But, uh, after that, I got a couple of photo shoots. Like, I have no idea on how I want to do that. And, and it's like, sadly, it probably won't hit me till I get there or the, the client will uh, contact me maybe like a couple of days before and say, hey, this is what I want to do. But just like writers, musicians, I mean, mm. we, we all have that block. Mm. And so how do you work to get through that block? Uh, well, uh, I have it on my website to where um, I have an inbox to where we converse back and forth. Like, what do you want to do with this? Or what color you want to wear? So we, I, we ping pong off of each other on mm -hmm. ideas and then we come to a final idea so that way when the day get here I wouldn't be standing there with a camera in my hand like all right so where do we shoot and what you want to do so we have that conversation prior to the uh, shoot happening mm -hmm. so one thing that I've heard about photographers is that you all work long hours is that true or? um the shoot don't take long it's the editing Oh. It's the editing that take the long hours. Um, and I literally just had this uh, conversation earlier. Um, it, it's definitely the editing. Those are, that's where the long hours come in at because you have people who want their skin to look a certain way or they want this side brighter than this one. They want to make their skin tone all one color. They want to make the background match their clothes. And you just got to, mm -hmm. you really can't complain because they paid for this. So that's where the long hours coming from. Earlier you mentioned that, you know, people can take a picture on a phone now, anybody can take a photo. What do you think is the future of photography? Um, phones. <laughs> That's, if you look at these commercials now, they're making phones with, cam uh, with, mega, with camera megapixels up to like 42 megapixels. Why, think, why does a phone need that? <laughs> but that's that's just their way of trying to, you know, a lot of people pockets are tight so they can afford a phone opposed to photographers rates. So they, they make phones to where oh we got 42 megapixels, you can make people disappear on the camera. But I mean, at the end of the day, who's really about to take time to capture that moment? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm at a wedding and uh, oh, they're about to kiss, but my battery's about to die. 
That's what you hire photographers for because they're not do they're not there for the wedding. <coughs> Excuse me, they're there to work. So, mm -hmm. but I, I really feel like it's gonna be the phones. But you're still gonna have photographers out there. I'm not about to mm -hmm. trade my camera for a phone, but that's where it's headed. Do you think the public um, will still be using photographers like ten years from now? Most definitely, because just like um, like I said, some people can't afford photographers. There's gonna be some people who can't afford that phone, so they're gonna feel, or not gonna wanna put in the work to you know, use the phone, so they're gonna hire a photographer. They might feel like, okay, yeah, I got a great phone with a great camera, but they may not have the eye for it. That's why I said earlier, um, a lot of the work comes from people having that eye. Anybody can pick up the phone, just snap. Mm -hmm. It could be all right picture, but you gotta have the eye for it. Mm -hmm. So a few days ago, I was having a debate with someone. Well, it wasn't a debate, it was a discussion, and we were talking about like art forms. And they said that they didn't think photography was a true art form. You probably heard this before. Mm. Do you think photography is an art? Um, most definitely. Um, mm -hmm. Because even even with art, like just regular art, like with drawing and, and painting, that's something you you learn to do, just like photography. Yeah. You, you studying. You learning something new every time. Um, with each one of them, I feel like if it wasn't an art, people wouldn't get paid for it. Yeah. Just like people who didn't think rap is an art, but they're getting paid for it. So, I don't know. I, I just think that person that you had that uh, conversation with, um, they're just really adamant about what they do mm -hmm. um, and just don't really think about what, what work goes into uh, photography. Mm. Do you suggest that new photographers start an LLC or business starting out, or like what, what route do you suggest that they take? Um, I feel it, it just depends on their work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, I know me, if I, like I said, if I can learn something, I'm going to turn it into a business. Um, mm -hmm. I cut hair, turn it into a business. Um, once I learn photography, I turn it into a business. And I mean, it's not really a big thing, but I also own a funnel cake business. Once I learned that people like my funnel cakes, I turned that into a business. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if they're starting, if they know it's just going to be a hobby, then by all means, you know, just let it be a hobby. But if they're serious about it, I definitely say um, start like get an LLC for it. Mm -hmm. Manual or automatic? Um, on manual. With that, and like with off camera flash, that has to be manual. Gotta be manual. You gotta be manual because with automatic, I could be sitting here looking at you and I could, um, you know, like before you actually press down the button, you could focus on whatever. Mm -hmm. That green box can be pointed up here and lose focus on my face. Right. So with manual, I can take the box, I can put it where I need to, where I can focus on, where everything can be sharp. Um, but I, I definitely would pick. I feel like automatic would have to go with like more so of um, maybe a sporting event. Mm. So that way you can snap, it can catch everything. Yeah. But with manual, uh, it, I think manual would take better portraits. Mm. So I, I would stick with manual. Mm. For someone who aspires to do what you do, what advice would you have for them? I would definitely tell them um, just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. Um, even if they do tell you that, show them that you can't. You know, just prove them wrong. Um, you know, you have to be your biggest supporter. Don't let nobody down talk you. Like, it took me forever because I was listening to other people. I um, didn't start working for myself until like five years ago. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I was scared to do it because I was listening. I, I had people in my ear that, you know, you ain't gonna be able to do it. Businesses always fail, and this, that, and the other. But I say, if this is what you want to do, I say go ahead and do it. Yeah. Most definitely, because everybody's opinions ain't paying your bills. Facts. 